If you're thinking about making a move to the Nashville area, then in today's video, I'm going to be giving you nine things to know from a local's perspective before you make the move. Everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin Martin and I'm a local Nashville real estate agent and founder of the Caitlin Martin team powered by Weikert Realtors, the Andrews Group. I specialize in working with savvy sellers who want to sell right and sell smart as well as working with out-of-staters looking to relocate to the middle Tennessee area. Now, if this is your first time stopping by my channel, thank you so much. Please feel free to click down below so that you are notified anytime I release new content all about making moves to the middle Tennessee area. So in today's video, I am giving you nine things to know from a local's perspective before you make the move. And here's the thing, we're gonna go ahead and jump right on in. So number one is the fact that in Nashville, if you actually do find someone that's born and raised here, they're called a unicorn because Nashville has been such a popular relocation destination for the better part of 10 plus years now. So full disclosure, I myself am actually not a local, but I have been here over 10 years. I've lived in Nashville for over 10 years. And so at that point you start to kind of fall into a more local category just because Nashville is such a melting pot. And so obviously the longer you're here, uh, the more you start to move towards that quote unquote local status. So again, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to find people that are actually from here just because it has been a melting pot and so many people have ended up moving here, whether they've been here longer like I have or even longer or someone who's been here say maybe in the last five years or so. So just know that in Nashville, we truly are a melting pot. So that actually brings me to number two. So even though Nashville is a melting pot, we really still have retained our Southern hospitality in fact, when I first moved to Nashville, so quick little background on me in case you haven't seen any of my other videos. I'm originally from Virginia. I went to school at the University of Tennessee. And then um, when I was there, my roommate freshman year, she was from the Nashville area, actually Brentwood. And so freshman year, I came to visit. I fell in love with Nashville and it's nothing compared to what it is now from back then. I mean, we're talking, um, goodness, more than 15 years ago. So from that point of visiting my freshman year in college, I made it my mission to move and live here someday. And so now I, it, it's been over 10 years. And I remember though, um, because between graduating college, I actually moved back to Virginia for two years and then made the move here. Um, but what, even though Virginia can be considered the South, um, I will never forget my first weekend back here in Nashville. I was out grocery shopping. It was a fall Saturday, so it was football. Um, and when I was in the grocery store, I had my UT gear on. And so many people were coming up to me saying, go balls or go big orange. You know, all, it's just, it's one of those things that we don't really have back in my hometown, you know, outside of Richmond, Virginia, that Southern hospitality there is not what it is here. And people here today, even though we are still a melting pot, we really still continue to have that Southern hospitality where people will talk to you. I've had several clients relocate here and they talk about how, you know, people will just start talking to them. If they go out to a restaurant, maybe if they sit at the bar, you know, they start up a little conversation and then before you know it, they've ended up making friends just because there is that that friendly southern hospitality atmosphere here and in fact Nashville in recent years has been named the friendliest city in America so the good news is that even though even still within the last four years where we've seen a massive influx of people coming from the west coast coming from New York Chicago despite uh, you know the the ideas of where these people are moving from you know there can be some negative connotations you know i'm not saying that it's just you know there there can be kind of a stereotype around that and people are afraid that it could mess up um you know our southern hospitality and our culture and it just hasn't now of course you're going to find a couple of bad eggs anywhere you go but overall nashville has still really maintained its sweet southern hospitality okay number three this is something that i you know noticed shortly after moving here but it's a thing here for people to have these big welcome signs 
outside on their front porch. I mean, they're typically like four or five feet tall, kind of uh, more narrow, and it just says welcome. It's just a thing we do here. In fact, I've had some clients before as, you know, we're going around for showings, they'll notice that and it's on several porches. The signs, you know, it's not the exact same sign, different fonts, different colors, things like that. Um, but you know, that's part of the Southern hospitality piece is we want to welcome you from the moment you step on our front porch. So if you see it, just know it's kind of a thing that we do here. You don't have to do it by any means. It's just, if you see it, just know it's just kind of a thing we do. All right, number four, we're going to talk about two street pronunciations. So if you see this one right here, this is a street that's going to be in downtown Nashville. If you see it, it is not pronounced Demon Bruin. It's pronounced Demumbrian. I know that it looks like Demon Bruin and a lot of times the GPS, if you've got the audio on, will be saying Demon Bruin, but it is actually Demumbrian. So that's one way to know if you're not local, we can hear people say, oh, you know, on Demon Bruin Street, nope. It's Demumbrium. And then the other one to mention is going to be this one right here. Again, GPSs can call it Briley, but it's actually Briley Parkway. And so Briley Parkway is actually what you get on to go uh, to the Opry. So just know if the GPS is still saying it as Briley, it's actually Briley Parkway. All right, number five. So I know one of the big attractions when people come to visit Nashville is going to be Broadway and our honky tonks. And so, you know, there can be this idea of I'm going to move to Nashville. We're going to go and experience Broadway. However, most locals, most people that live here actually, for the most point, avoid going down to Broadway and, and being amongst the tourists. Now, with some of the growth and development in downtown, including things like Fifth and Broad, that big development with the different shops and restaurants, um, obviously, of course, right there on Broadway, you are going to have Bridgestone Arena. So there are reasons for locals or those who live here to go downtown. It's just you know, going out on Broadway is not like an every weekend occurrence. It's not a regular occurrence. Again, most locals tend to avoid going uh, down on Broadway to go out. Now, if they do, it typically tends to be more of like a midtown area. But just know um, there can be that misconception. But a lot of times locals tend to just avoid uh, going out and about in the honky tonks you know they can be really crowded lots of people lots of tourists uh, so it, they typically tend to avoid it so number six living here in music city you tend to get opportunities here that you just don't get anywhere else because the country artists live here in the middle tennessee area um one great example is country artist morgan wallen last year for his album release he did a surprise free concert at bridgestone arena and if you could get down there to get the tickets you were able to go and do his album kickoff concert he filled bridgestone arena so again these aren't things that are going to be typical if you live in other cities but because our artists do live here um you know you can tend to see certain like pop-up concerts you can see them out and about also you know when artists are scheduled to play at bridgestone as part of their tours um a lot of times you can get special guests some you know other country artists come in just because again they live here it's easy for them to pop in do a surprise performance and go home but on the flip side, now we do have all of these great opportunities, especially when it comes to music and country music, but on the flip side of that, you will notice that sometimes those country artists will actually not have a Nashville tour date because this is where they live. And so a lot of times they're wanting to be able to get out to their fans. And so, you know, it can be frustrating from time to time if it's like one of your big favorite artists and they don't have a Nashville tour date, you start to look around at like Atlanta or somewhere in Kentucky to go um, because sometimes they will just not do a Nashville tour date. That's not all the time, that's not every tour, but that can be a frustration that you would run into, especially if you're a country music fan. All right, number seven, you're gonna notice when you go out to restaurants here, mac and cheese is on so many menus, 
to the point that we pretty much consider it a vegetable. It is very much a staple here. So if you're a mac and cheese lover, just know we've got plenty of it in Nashville. Number eight. So I've mentioned this in previous videos, but if you've not seen them, um, here in the Middle Tennessee area, we do get all four seasons, which is one of the things that people love. Now, when it comes to the four seasons, yes, we do have winter where it's cold, cloudy, dreary, but when we're lucky enough, we can get some snow. However, if we get snow, the city pretty much shuts down, especially if it starts to stick to the road. So anything more than a dusting, the, we tend to just shut down, schools close with even the forecast of snow before the first snowflake has even fallen. And you'll notice that at the grocery store, everyone is buying up the milk and bread to the point that I think, I don't know if they still do it uh, just because I don't watch local news, um, but one of the local news stations, whenever they used to do winter forecast, they would talk about where it fell on a milk and bread scale because they would talk about, you know, I don't know what people are making with just milk and bread, but you will tend to find that the grocery stores get really packed. Those items are typically the first to go. So just be aware, um, you know, again, snow's not super typical here. It's more of a novelty experience when it does happen, but when it does, we just don't know how to handle the winter weather like maybe our friends up north do. And then number nine, so being in the South, being in Nashville, Football, especially college football in the fall, it is not just it is not just a fun weekend activity. Football, especially SEC football here in the South, it's actually a way of life. Now, in Nashville, we do a Vanderbilt University, which Vanderbilt is a part of the SEC. However, you're gonna find in Nashville, you've got fans from all different SEC schools, and it's not just limited to SEC. In fact, there's other schools from across the nation that will have watch parties at various uh, bars and restaurants in downtown Nashville, and there's different clubs and meetups. I know that there's some from Michigan. I know also um, USC, Southern Cal. So there's, because Nashville's a melting pot, we do cater to a lot of different football teams, but just know, SEC football is a way of life for us. It dominates our Saturdays in the fall. And then of course we do have the Tennessee Titans NFL team that is uh, that plays right in the heart of downtown Nashville at Nissan Stadium. And if you've been looking at Nashville, maybe you've come across articles, uh, the Tennessee Titans, they are going to be getting a brand new, amazing um, stadium that's going to be being built over the next couple of years. I believe it's supposed to be ready to go for the 2027 season, but it's going to completely change the East Bank there um, where the current stadium is. They're going to be building the new one next to it, demoing it, and then they plan to take everything that's there on the East Bank of the river because it does sit on the Cumberland River that separates the east side of uh, Nashville from the Broadway side, they're gonna be completely changing the landscape of the East Bank, including uh, mixed use developments, shopping, retail, office space, restaurants. It's going to really change the way that it looks as you know, compared to the way it is right now. But again, just know if you're coming to the South, football is absolutely a way of life for us. So if you're thinking about making a move to the Middle Tennessee area, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. All of my contact information is below. Again, my name is Caitlin Martin. I'll see you next time.